Hey fam, Wendy here, aka The Thrifty Sewist, here to show you how to thread my Babylock BLCS2 cover stitch machine. All right, so we're gonna start with the looper first. I'm gonna use white in the looper because the back of my fabric is white and that's what you're gonna see on the back. So um, I have the worst possible setup for this because my cover stitch is in just such a small tight space. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to see everything uh, clearly enough. Ugh, if not, don't come at me. Just trying to help. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna stick my thread on here. This fourth thread spot here is for the looper thread. And you probably cannot see this in the video, but this silver um, bar here has four thread guides at the top of it. Let me see if I can move the camera up. So these four loops are step one to threading. So what you're gonna do, I'm just gonna show you one and then I'm gonna try to move the camera back down. So you're gonna grab your thread and very simply just pass it through that loop, okay? So that's step one. Um, and you're going to do that with all of your threads. So I'll just go ahead and do these two as well while I'm at it. Just pass it right through the loop. Super easy. Okay. Let me move you back down. All right, now for the looper, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this, so you just push it to the right gently and it'll pop open. And then for this door, just open it to your left and that'll pop open as well. The first thing we need to do, because this is uh, jet air threading, is we need to make sure that this little silver bar here is to the left. So the way that you do that, is there's this little white button right here. So what you're gonna do is gently press on that, not too hard, and then you're going to um, turn your hand crank just until that button pops in and that bar pops all the way to the left. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on the button. It will naturally pop in as you turn your hand crank. Um, and once you turn it enough, it will just pop in and that bar will pop over to the left. This bar needs to be over to the left in order for the jet air threading to work. There is also a little threading guide here to follow. Um, so, you know, if you needed that. Um, okay, so next up is I'm gonna grab my looper thread, which is this white thread. I'm grabbing it from up there where that silver thread loop is, like I just showed you. And the first step is right here, there's a little hole in this silver guide. So the first step is to pass the thread through that little silver hole. And I really hope my arms aren't in the way too much. Okay, so hopefully you can see that that thread is now in that little hole. Then you're gonna pass it under this blue disc and up over this little silver part. Okay, so under there and over. now. One thing I struggled with when I first got this machine was um, this part because I expected to feel some tension. So if you've ever threaded a serger, you know that when you pass it through like the tension guide, you kind of floss it in, you hear a little click and you can feel that tension. Um, it's important to note that you're not really gonna feel much tension on this. This is super loose, okay? You will feel tension up here on these two on the threads, but for the looper, um, you just wanna make sure it passes fully under there and up and above this silver guide. Another thing is make sure it's in this silver guide and not out here, because then there will not be enough tension on it and your stitches will be wonky. Okay, so um, make sure it is behind that silver guide. Next, you're gonna take your end, pull a little bit of slack, and you're gonna stick it right here in this threading port. So stick it in, and then I kinda of like to try to just push it in a little bit at a time, 
and it's kind of hard to tell whether it's actually going in or not. It doesn't take too much. You don't have to push in a ton of length, but when you feel like you may have gotten enough in there, all you're going to do is push this lever down and you'll see that this will tighten and then your thread will sort of ball up over here on the left. So I'm going to push my lever and there we go. And if it doesn't tighten and come over here, just thread a little bit more into this little port. It just means that it didn't have enough to basically pull on. So now if you can see, and hopefully you can, um, that my thread is right here. So it kind of balls itself up. That's what we want. We want the thread right there. So go ahead and close that. We're done with the looper. Okay. And also very important. Now you want to push this bar back to the right. If you don't push that bar back to the right, the machine's not going to sew. So push that back, close up your door. We're done with the looper. All right, next is the thread. So again, the first step is to pass through the silver, um, the silver thread guide at the top, which I showed you. Pull your thread down and there is, let me lift you up again. Right here, a tension disc, okay? So there's three because there's three threads. I'm only doing two threads. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you pull, you're going to put the thread in there. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Um, I can't. You want to put the thread in there, but then you want to make sure to pull it down until you feel tension. Okay. Um, this is what's going to give it the proper tension when sewing. So I like to hold, hold it like this and then uh, kind of thread the middle like sort of like flossing your teeth push it in till you hear a click did you hear that click that's good that's what you want okay next and these are all color coded so right now I'm doing the orange so the next step is there are little holes if I could lift you up enough okay there's little holes here one for each of the three threads so next step is to put the thread through that little hole. So just feed it right down through that hole. Okay. Now you want to um, pull your thread under this disc and you should feel tension here. So um, I like to pull a little bit of slack. Pull it under. And what you're going to feel is, and how you know it's fully in there, you're going to feel tension, 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 and then it's going to loosen up a little bit. And that's how you know that it's fully in that guide there. Okay. Next, right up and over this plastic part here and into this silver guide. And then behind this little bar here. So let me see if I can zoom you in. Okay. So um, this little bar has three different spaces because there's three different threads that you can use. Here's a space right here. There's one right here and the third one right here. So what you want to do is depending on the thread, um, the thread position that you're going to use here depends on where your thread spool is on the top here. I hope that makes sense. So because I'm using the first thread spool, I'm going to use this first little slot. So I like to, again, kind of hold it like I would hold floss. You're going to put it behind and then bring it in front. Okay. So this silver part right here is you can see hopefully it kind of jiggles it separates from this part here um so basically your thread is going behind this silver part but in front of this i hope that makes sense it's a little bit tricky to explain um 
So hopefully that makes sense. So once your thread is in that guide, then you wanna put it through this thread guide here, right above the needles. Make sure it's behind that, and then you're just gonna thread your needle. All right, so threading my needle here, and pull it out. All right, let's do that all again. So here's my second thread. Again, um, zoom me back out here. Okay, so here's my second thread holding it like floss, flossing it in between that first tension disc. You should hear a click. Okay, there's my click. Putting it through my hole right here. And I'm gonna pass it under the knob. Again, you're gonna feel a little bit of tension. And then it's gonna loosen up a bit when it's fully under that knob. Now, for the second and third threads, you're also gonna pass them under this little silver guide right here. Okay, and then back up and over this plastic part through this silver guide, and then again behind this um, little silver part, depending on the thread position. So this is my second thread. So I'm gonna use the second position. So uh, let me see, my hands might get in the way here. So I'm threading it in between the two silver parts and then into this second thread slot right here and then behind the needle bar and then thread my needle. So you will notice that I'm using the first two thread spools um, but my needles are in the second two positions so Here's where my first needle would be, okay? Here's the second needle, which is right here, and the third needle. So you would think that I should have, because I'm using the sort of right two needles, that I would have these two right two spools threaded. Um, it doesn't matter which ones you thread, as long as you get it into the needle. Um, this is tricky to explain, so I'm trying to sort of articulate this the best I can. So, which thread spools up here don't matter as long as you have the thread thread it through correctly. So I always only use one and two. I never thread this third one because I never use the third spool of thread. I only ever do two threads on top, um, but no matter which needle position I'm using down here, it doesn't matter. I'm always threading these two, whether I'm using this needle and this needle, this needle and this needle, or whatever. So I hope that makes sense, um, but just a little hack for you. And so we're done. So the next step, which I always, always do, I never ever skip, is to do a test sew. You can see, <laughs> like I said, I never skip it. So I grab a scrap piece of fabric, preferably one that's similar to um, the, the fabric that I'm using for my garment. Um, I just put it under there, put my foot down, and so. Put my needles at the highest position, put my presser foot up, and here's how you lock in a cover stitch, okay? So take something, I like to use the tweezers that came with the cover stitch. You're gonna kind of lift the front of your foot up, make sure your needles are at the highest position, and use something to pull your two threads forward, okay? And then you're gonna cut them off. So I like to slide my finger under there, snip them off, then what you can do is you can pull your fabric out of the back, okay, and then snip your looper thread. And that will pull your threads to the back and lock in your stitches. Now, I know 
I probably should have used a clean sample for this, but <laughs> this is just what I had lying around. So um, the pink thread here is my stitching, okay? So it looks great on the top. And you also want to check the back. Oh, okay. Not a good example because there's so much crap on the back here. Um, but actually, I can show you. So right here, okay, this is not how you want this to look. You can see the loopers um, are all loose. That is how is not how you want it to look. You, you want it to look like this. Okay, nice and even stitching on both sides, and your loopers are crossing over sort of like a ladder. Okay, this is what you want it to look like. If it doesn't look like this, rethread it. Okay, so again, bad example here. You don't want it to look like this, you want it to look just like this. Okay, all right, so that's it. I hope that was helpful. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what other kind of sewing tutorials you want to see. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, like the video, and until next time, bye!